Welcome to Kelly FC TV. Today we have 1997 Cup Final hero David Began. David made 33 starts for the club and came on 16 times as a substitute, scoring one goal against Reykjavik in Europe. His debut was against the United and his last game was a sub in the Scottish Cup against Alaba. There you go. David also appeared four times for Scotland under 21, is that right? Yeah. David, your younger days as a footballer, how did it all start for you? Um, feel what I remember just playing playing with my big brother, to be honest, my mates in the just every day after school and any spare time. I played for my local team New Farm Loch to start with. And Hooky, I think Hooky played initially in my team and then he went down to the younger age group. Um, then from there I went to Loudoun and then Galston. And I think around about that time, U U thirteen, U twelves, uh, Jimmy Clark came in one of the games and seen me and, and that was that, I signed S form and then at 16 I came in and done the YTS. So back in those days there was no youth academies type thing, it was no, all the S form, so showing your age. The, 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 the schoolboy forms, I think I signed that when I was 13. Uh, the, nowadays they're, they're in these academies and they're like full time, full -time footballers now, they're four nights a week. So at that time we came in on a Thursday night, one night a week and uh, I loved it. At the time the club was part time, and uh, like I said, Tommy Tate, and that was would, would train with as well, so it was good. I loved it. So, who was your youth team coach? Was it? It was Jimmy Clark initially, and then um, Alan Robertson, Stuart McLean, uh, and they took us through to U18s. And then I think after my I think my first year of ITS, I went in and done no, I think my second year of ITS, I went to Trun for a year. And, and played with them, so that was good, good experience, enjoyed it. It's a big learning club going to play junior against men. I loved it, I, I, and uh, you're right, you either you sink or swim, can you deal with, not just the football inside, it's like can you deal with the, the bad pitches, the bad changing rooms, cold showers, and like you say, you're in, you're in against men, and, and they don't they don't hold back, you know, they don't say, oh, he's just a, a young a young kid, try to make it, they, they, they just fly in, and you, you, you've, got to, you've got to deal with the, the physical side. So you made your debut in December '96. Mm -hmm. Shortly after, Alec Cotton was sacked as manager. Yeah. Bobby was just doing the reserves at the time. Did he say to you that he was going to put you into the first team almost straight away when he became uh, interim uh, manager? Ah, uh, I mean, when we, when I was in the reserves, he was always he, he kind of says a few things. He, he, but I never even really, not that I never believed him. I just didn't. I just never thought anything would come here. He's always he was always saying like if if I was a manager I'd, I'd stick you in, and uh, says it says it a few times and then never even thought anything of it. He became the, the caretaker manager and they put me into the office and first time I'd met KB, uh, and he just says listen I'm going to play on Saturday, and I was just like no bother all right. And then I walked out the dress out his, out his office and I was still didn't really I couldn't get it in my head. I didn't realise I was still playing and then. Marco was like, he was always like, Are you, you're getting fined or something, but were you in the manager's office? I says, oh, you tell me I'm playing on Saturday, and I don't think he could believe it either, but uh, nah, so that, that was it, just threw me right in. What do you remember of your debut? Debut was, uh, was a strange game actually, I, I, I never had a good debut, I didn't play well, I remember first Were you very nervous that day or were you? I think probably looking back, I maybe was a wee bit nervous, I probably let it kind of get to me a little bit. I didn't feel particularly nervous at, at the time, but looking back now, I think I, I probably was. Um, I remember getting s smashed early doors first couple of minutes, and I was for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm, I'm limping about and I'm thinking, I, I, I can't come off after 15 minutes of my debut. So, any that I struggled on, I think I get, I get hooked after an hour maybe, 65 yeah. minutes, and we get beat 2-0, and it was like, what, what? What's this, is this what's what's going to be? Aye, so it's so a bit of a disappointment to be honest, my debut. One of your good friends in football was Alec Buck, mm -hmm. who's now working in the States coaching. Yeah. Bobby says that you and him were one of the reasons why things took off that season. Was it easy to fit into the dressing room? Was there a good bit of humour or were the senior pros a bit hesitant about these two young no, I mean, upper snappers? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, we, we all trained together anyway, so it wasn't as if we trained away for the first team and then they just brought us in at the cold group. We, we were in amongst it, we changed in the dressing room, everybody was there. So it was a great dressing room, a great banter and everybody got on really well. So it was just a matter of 
just taking it for the for the training for the training ground and, and going right into the games. And I think at that age, you, you, you've got none, nothing to lose really. You're just going in and. And he always gave you confidence anyway, Bobby. He's just like, you just go play your normal game. Don't worry about things. If you make a mistake, just just forget about it. Just be positive and and get at your defenders and just go and play. We were in a, rele- a relegation dogfight that season. Mm-hmm. Did you find that the cup run was a, a added distraction? We were able to relax more than the Premier League games? I think it was a welcome distraction, aye, because it was... It, it, when, you're, when you're down there and you're fighting for your life almost you know it, for the older pros I think it would have been more difficult and they would they would have probably been a bit more nervous or anxious about about that for me and Burke I think it was just like it's just another game but uh, the cup run I mean the cup run was great and it was just like like you say it took, took a bit of the pressure away for that, for that bad league form, obviously, at that particular time. Aye. You were one of only four players to start every cup tie that season. What do you remember about the cup run before we get to the final or the semi-final? I think, I think looking back, you would probably say we, we get some decent draws. I mean, was it East Stirling here at home to East start Stirling, with? Yeah. And then Clyde, Clyde away. then Morton. Uh, probably on paper, you're seeing your hardest games than the United in the semi-final, because yeah. they, they, were, they were a good team at the time. Um, I mean, Clyde away. That was that was a difficult game to be fair. And, uh, Bunyan scored the penalty, but and then then, then we went to Morton and played really well, five two. Um, so th- those three games they were good games. Like you were never you were not playing anybody in the Premier League. So we, we were always favourites and we were under a bit of pressure that way because we were expected to win. But it was always they, they were good games. I think they were good games for us. The semi finals were bores of attrition. <laughs> was it? Major relief to get through after the replay. I think I think it was really. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to watch those games again, are they? I mean, at the time you don't you're playing in them and you don't realise that this is a, this game's terrible. But it was just a matter of trying to get the win, however however you, we we could, and it was just, just a great little relief when when Maka stuck the goal in. So we won on the Tuesday night, did you have your Falkirk scarf on on the Wednesday night, hoping that Falkirk would beat Celtic? No, I didn't even, I don't even remember, I don't even remember them playing Celtic, I, I just, I was just so, so happy that we'd made it in, I, right. I, I wasn't caring if we could get Celtic in the final, so be it, it was not a matter of desperately wanting to get Falkirk in the final. Before the final, we- we had to play Aberdeen and get the, mm-hmm. the point we required to stay in the Premier League. That must have been a major relief in the dressing room to secure this Premier status. Yeah, again, I mean, it was, it was obviously very, very important for the club. And, you know, I think about 10 minutes to go, I think we scored the goal. Hope, hope, we, scores the, nice. hope we scores the goal. So it was a massive relief for everybody. And uh, then after the final whistle, like you say, just, just relief. But then I think we had a couple of weeks to go before the final because I think the, the playoffs were happening and we, we didn't do it or whoever it was and so you, you then had a couple of weeks to just relax, recharge the batteries and then just totally focus in the final. The lead up to the final, did Bobby change anything for you? Did no. Just more of the same? More of the same. I, I, we, we, we trained on the park I think uh, at the stadium so that, that was good, you know, training on a good surface and Everybody was buzzing, the tempo was really good and I think everybody was just really looking forward to it. It was just building up nicely and nothing nothing changed with regards what what we'd done in preparation or anything. We, were, we either had the choice to stay at the hotel or stay in our own beds. I, I, I just stayed at my at my mum and dad's, so no, it was fine. Morning in the cup final, you wake up or did you, did you get any sleep the night before? How did you feel? Were you nervous, excited, well, confident? Well, Berkey, Berkey came and stayed at mine and uh, we woke up in the morning, my dad burst in and he's got a cup of tea and ready to go kind of thing. He was, he was, he was high the kite and Berkey's like, I need shoes, I need, I need, I need to buy shoes for my, because we're out the night, he says, we're, we're going to be out the night, I need shoes for my, my suit. So, ended up doing the tune in the morning of the cup final, we were buying shoes with Berkey, it was a surreal moment, to be, to be fair. Did Bobby know that? I don't think so, and it, <laughs> the place was full of Kilmarnock fans and I think they're kind of looking, giving you the double take, but uh, that's, that was one of the strange moments, of, or strange things for that day that 
that know a lot of people know. The cup final itself, do you remember it well or did it just pass in a flash? I passed in a flash. I mean I've never I've never seen seen the game again, I've never watched it and Have you not? No, I've never seen it. I've seen clips, I've seen the goal obviously and lifting the cup and everything, but I've never seen the full game again. Uh, if you've got to remember, I think we'd done alright first half, I think we were a better team, deservedly winning at half time and then Falkirk come into it a bit second half and you know, they've got that that dodgy dodgy goal disallowed, I mean it was offside. Definitely offside, wasn't it? I mean, it was, I mean. Yards offside. The most relieved man was Tom Brown, I think, because he, he lost his marker. Aye, aye, I know. <laughs> you, know you, you just see him looking, looking around the, the lines and he's got his flag up, so aye, that was a big relief. Do you remember anything from the goal itself, Paul Reid's goal? Aye, I mean, it's funny, that's what I remember a, a wee bit about the game. I know the, me and Burke were on the corners, we were both hitting in swingers, so the corners that day, we, we never really hit many bad ones, they were all decent corners and that I had to come off at an angle at the front post and drag the guy at the front post away and then Kevin would come into that area and he'd get a good flick on and eh, and Bonny just knocked it, knocked it away so it was, nah, it was a good good goal. So the final whistle went, what was your emotion? Ah, just sheer jubilation, it was such a, an amazing feeling, I couldn't quite believe it to be honest, I mean I think I just turned 20 the month before, I mean just turned 20, Burke was still 19, so just surreal, surreal to be, you know, because you watch the Scottish Cup, that was the biggest game of the season when we were yeah. growing up and it was a, the, the took, took up the full day and then, you know, to be actually winning it and going and lifting it, it was, it was amazing. Did you have any idea of the celebrations or the reception you were going to get when you travel back down to Kilmarnock on the bus? No idea, I mean, we, we never even, th you don't think it, you don't think it, anything like that even in the lead up to the game or even after it you don't think oh we're going to go back and there's going to be thousands of people waiting on us we didn't, didn't even think about it and then we got off the team bus at, at Fennec and then we got on to the open top bus and we're driving down um, Glasgow Road or whatever and there was a few people out and they come round the is it where Wilkinson's is now yeah. they run that, uh -huh. that bit and uh, it started gradually building up and then you turn into John Finney Street and I, I don't think I've seen anything quite like it before in my life. I mean, absolutely amazing. So what was the highlight of the John Finney Street? I would say so, I, I mean, <coughs> apart from actually, you know, physically lifting the cup, that, that, yeah. was, that was a great a great moment, but just to see all the people and how happy it made, I mean, I, I would think the whole town was it that day and just amazing that we could could do that for them, it was, it was brilliant. You never played that many games for Comal, no. which I found quite interesting when I was I was and looking at some of the games. So did is, there some, <laughs> is there some regrets to this day that I, I never mean, turned out better than what you did, having hit the highs of the I, cup final? I, I, there is a, a, a little bit, uh, for whatever reason it, it just didn't quite work out for the next maybe year or so after and then a lot of people don't know I had a year left in my contract and I went in and seen the manager and asked, I asked away and he was he was kind of hesitant, he didn't want me to go and he says I'll let you go on loan and I wasn't keen on that either and then went and met the chairman and Bobby and decided, they decided just to, to let me go kind of thing so at the time I was quite happy, I was happy to move to Inverness and I had a great three years up there but after a year I done my knee and I had a hernia so I was almost injured for two years after uh, for, the, for the last two years at, up at Inverness and in hindsight knowing that about my injuries I would have I wouldn't have went because at that time their medical staff was non-existent it was just it just wasn't there so I would have got better looked after here basically right. so and that would have gave me a better chance to, 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 to play longer mm -hmm. play longer at a higher level but after that I've just had issues with my knees, so it's been right. disappointing for that for that point of view. But it, what, what's for you, Noel Bashi? I'm quite happy. That's true. Yeah. You're coaching in America. Tell us a wee bit of that. Again, that, that it was. Uh, I've been out there six years now, so really settled, really enjoy it. And it all came through one of my teammates for Kilmarnock, Darren Beasley. Always kept in touch with him, and he's been out there probably twelve years, maybe. So at the end end of my career, 31, 32, and, and he says, why don't you come over for a holiday and just see how you see how you like it, and when I seen the setup, very, very professionally run, and the facilities, and 
you know, just the lifestyle, living in DC, it's a fantastic city. So for that point, uh, I was I was up for it for, for then, and it was just a matter of getting sponsored for visas and all that stuff. So it's, it took a long while, but uh, finally, kind of starting to get settled and everything's everything's going well. Touch good. Got quite, quite five questions. Mm-hmm. Best player you played with? Best player I played with, probably maybe Tommy Burns or Ian Durant. Right. Against? Uh, against Barry Ferguson was always good at. Couldn't get near Barry Ferguson. Very That's good. a strange one. Aye, very <laughs> good. Um, I mean, you've got you've got your. I mean, you've got Gaza and Loudrop and these guys. Aye. I was probably say when you think about it, probably probably Gaston really, and I <laughs> forgot about him. Larson, I mean, you've got the Canio, there's a few. I've seen Gaza. Uh, Gaza. Uh, and finally, former manager's not too well just now. A wee message for Bobby. I was absolutely gutted when I heard the news. I mean, it was Berkey, he sent me a text, the, the, the headline of the newspaper, and obviously straight away you're just hoping everything's alright, so... Aye, uh, absolutely got it. I hope he gets his treatment and and uh, he manages to, to beat it, obviously. So, fingers crossed, I'll be, be thinking about him. David, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Cheers, thank Cheers. you.